punch out. Control. They keep using rebuilds, and it's just what's gonna happen. I told you again and again that we're just testing the engine to back off. But do you listen? Do you listen? Do you ever listen? Give me a break. You arrogant son of <laughs> That's it, Carlton! You're through! You'll never race again! Never! Ever! <laughs> Wait a minute. Helen, why? Just because you said that you love me. You think that means anything goes? Helen, would you be reasonable for God's sake? Yeah. You bastard. You all like. Get a girl drunk and pop her off. Helen, look, I wasn't taking advantage of you being a little tipsy. But you did. I never want to see you again. Ever. you a check for the lessons. Look, we had fun, didn't we? Go jerk off. I'll take as many engineering courses as I can. How are you going to be able to afford school then? Well, I'll probably get a job in a garage. A mechanic. Sounds like a good idea. No, that's enough for me. I'm going to float away. Where are you going to stay in this hick town? I'll probably flop down under a bridge or something. I could, uh, make room for you at my place. It's tempting. But I gotta put a few miles behind me tonight. Shot down again. You guys staying out of trouble? Hey, thanks for the offer. When you get to Washington, you'll be ready for bear. Bears I can handle. It's those procurement buzzards that bother me. Good Lord, are you still driving this wreck? 
I haven't had time to pick up the new one. That settles it. Tomorrow morning, you go down to the dealership and you buy a new one on me. But all those new gadgets... Just think I... how this makes me look. Sam Milchor's private secretary driving around in this atrocity. This is for Monday at the Pentagon. And I'll reschedule the foreign reps meeting for later in the week. Don't worry. We'll get that contract. The big three are giving us competition, not to mention the Japanese and the Germans. Milshaw Industries was always number one. We'll stay number one. And you will get that contract. Just that I'm not used to having my back this close to the wall. You're a prize, Alice. Now get in and get some rest. That's a direct order. Good night, Sam. See you Tuesday. And bring back the contract. That's an order. I might just do that. Good night, Alice. Daddy, working late again? You know what time it is, young lady? Yeah, it's three o'clock. What's with the headlight? It's nothing. Nothing? What the hell did you hit? Did you have another accident? It wasn't my fault. Some idiot on a motorcycle came out of nowhere. Let me go. Did anybody get hurt? I didn't stop long enough to find out. Uh, Sam Milchor, Dr. Scott. I'm sorry about the time, but I want you over at my place just as soon as you can get there. I'll explain when I see you. Watch his head. That's good, Tony. You and Paco bring along everything you can find. What's going on? Well, that's a good reaction. Can't go hurt too bad. Oh, are you kidding me? Oh, I hurt in places I didn't know I had. <sighs> Who are you? I'm Dr. Scott. You were found lying in a ditch, unconscious. Spilled from your motorcycle from the looks of it. Motorcycle? Who are all these people? Quite possibly owe your life to all these people. Indeed. What's the needle for? It's to get you to stop asking foolish questions when you should be resting. <sighs> A few more seconds, you're going to be in dreamland. Are you the nurse? Do I look like one? Sort of. Well, I'm not. That's good. You must be an angel. Motorcycles. Huh. Suicycles would be a better word. They should not be allowed on the roads. Anything can be misused and abused, Virginia. Not just motorcycles. Oh, I suppose so. Well, how soon before we can move him out of here? I mean, he doesn't seem to be in any kind of critical condition, does he? No, he's got a torn ligament in his right shoulder. His left ankle's fallen pretty badly, but I don't think it's a fracture. Various other cuts, bruises, abrasions. Is that all? Well, looks like this one might make it. Oh, he'll make it all right. I'll know more after analyzing the x-rays. Have someone looking at him every hour or so. If he starts to move, give me a call. 
You know, I told Sam he should have been hospitalized, but he wouldn't hear of it. I guess he had his reasons. Ellen, tell your mother I'm flying to Washington. I'll be back next Tuesday. Okay, Dad. Take care. I'll stay at our Virginia home. What's Father doing in Washington? Some meeting at the Pentagon. I can never be too sure when it's your father. Dr. Scott tells me a young man is going to be all right. No thanks to you. Look, don't start on me. I am not in the mood. Listen to me, young lady. I think it's about time that you take responsibility for your actions. I think it's time you grew up. And do what, Mother? Sit around with you and your phony religious friends as you get drunk and talk about how you're going to solve the problems of drug abuse? Helen, you are making a mockery out of me. Mother, your whole life is a mockery. You should grow up. Running away again is not the answer, young lady. <gasps> Excuse me, Miss Milshaw. I didn't know you were here. Mrs. Milshaw told me to look in. The doctor say you must take this. Anything else? You're coming along just fine. We'll have you on crutches in a couple days. So, Doc, why all this, uh, why all this first-class treatment for a total stranger, huh? You know, I learned something a long time ago. Never look a gift horse in the mouth. You might get bitten. You're okay, Doc. Mrs. Milshaw, this is the new polo pony I was telling you about. Do you like him? Saddle him up for me. I'll take him out this afternoon. See how well we look together. Mom, my friends are so glad we asked them to stay over tonight. I figured you invited them when I saw the horses unloaded this morning. Oh, they'll be leaving tomorrow for the polo match in Los Angeles. Hey, why don't you come with us? We can put your horse in one of the blue trailers. You can still enter. Well, dear heart's not trained for cola. We don't breathe for cola, you know? Who is that? Champagne? Animal of a different breed. 
Tall, dark, and handsome. I'll bet he's got a 12-inch. Betty! God! <laughs> The fast attack vehicle can be airlifted anywhere military strategic needs require its special capabilities. In mountainous terrain, the FAV can reach speeds of 75 miles per hour. With its unique structure and special cross-centered balancing system, this vehicle could become America's best defense against armed aggression. There you have it, gentlemen. The Porsche FAV, the best anti-tank weapon manufactured in the free world. And that, Sam, is what you're up against. Gentlemen, on sheer speed and maneuverability, our product can blow that Porsche machine right out of the water. Sam, you've been working on that damn dune buggy of yours for over two years now. Forget it. It just doesn't work. 30 days. You give my men 30 days and we'll meet all of your load requirements. We'll also quiet it down. Damn! You're willing to buy an expensive, overweight, armored platform that's going to bog down at the first mud puddle or sand dune? Don't knock the competition, Mel Shaw. I fought against their armor in North Africa, and they ran rings around us until we overwhelmed them with manpower and equipment. General, you just made my point. If we're ever involved in another land war, we are going to be the underdogs as far as manpower and equipment go. All right, Mel Shaw. We'll give you 30 days to get that super dune buggy of yours together. Maybe I'm a little old-fashioned, but I believe in buying American. Gentlemen, I won't let you down. Hiya, Charles. Welcome home, Mr. Milshaw. I have a pleasant trip, son. I'm bushed. Where is everybody? Mrs. Milshaw went to meet Father Paxton for luncheon at La Roquette, sir. And I believe Miss Milshaw is out to return on her horse. It goes on, eh, Charles? Yes. How's our guest? Uh, the gentleman in the guest house, sir, Mr. Carlton, he seems considerably improved, sir. I'm glad to hear it. I'll look in on him later. Ah! Get back early! How are things at the Pentagon? Talk to the Porsche people. They seem to have the inside track. Unless we do something damned radical in the next 30 days. We've already spent a fortune on research and development for this project. Money is not the object. Milshaw Industries' prestige is on the line. We better get our asses in gear. Sam, there's only so much we can do and still stay within the Army parameters for a fast attack, all-terrain, search-and-destroy vehicle. I still think it might be a good idea to cut a deal with one of the major Japanese companies. They know more Did it ever occur to you what would happen to this country if a conventional war broke out? We're too damn dependent on foreign countries to supply elements of our defense weaponry. If that supply system ever broke down, we'd be up shit creek. There isn't going to be any war. So why not take advantage of any price break we can get? A uh, voltage regulator doesn't have a nationality, Sam. Well, maybe it doesn't, but I do. And I'm still chairman of the board. Looking around. Hope you don't mind. Oh, sure. Make yourself at home. Everybody else does around here. How's the ankle? Oh, it's getting better. Are you sure you should be using it? I can't stand being cooped up. Come on. I'll show you around. By the way, my name's Betty. I'm Brett. Yeah, I know. Helen and I grew up together. Same finishing school, same college. I often stand in for her around here. <laughs> the Milshaws have done very well this season, especially Helen's Alfie and Mrs. Milshaw's Lady Anne. Hey there. <laughs> Just a little kiss. <laughs> Watch the dosage. Mega vitamins. Uh, th that's what they call it. I guess I haven't been around horses that much. <sighs> that ought to get his hindquarters over the hurdles now. 
isn't Mrs. Milshaw wonderful? Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you all very, very much for coming here this afternoon. But before we continue on, I have something to show you. This poor, unfortunate creature is Martha. Martha has been disabled from birth with cerebral palsy. And that's why we're all here this afternoon, to raise money to fight this dreaded affliction. And I pray that when all of you give, you give most generously. Thank you, Charles. And Father, this is for your church. Thank you, Mr. For the continued support of the President's Council Against Drug Abuse, we once again recognize Virginia Milshaw as our Volunteer of the Year. Winning the Baja run the last two years, I don't plan on coming in second this time around. Hey, Chief. I'll be up at the house. That'll look sharp for the party. Hi. Dave Roberts. Brad. Carl. You're the guy that was hit by a truck, huh? I'll never know. It was hit and run. Yeah? Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Milshaw's picked me up, took me in. Huh. Sam's okay. So you work on these things, huh? Yeah. Structural engineer. They got me doing everything around here. I don't mind, though. When you see these things go from rough drawings to checkered flag. Sure beats working at Jack in the Box. I hear Helen's worrying out her tennis instructor's balls. Did Helen have another accident? the musk ox that Virginia shot with its back turned? It is indeed. Fortunately, the animal was spared the final horror of looking at Virginia's face. <laughs> Isn't this a great party? <clears throat> all these wonderful people and all this togetherness. That was nice, Chen, but you must learn to control yourself and watch your mouth. Wouldn't want to lose that valuable tongue of yours now, would you? It's cool, dude. It's happened before. Who was that? <clears throat> oh, a friend of Betty's, I think. You don't even require a name now? <laughs> Typical Helen. <laughs> Having a good time, dear? 
<clears throat> Doesn't one always have a good time at a Milshaw bash? No oh, good. When you have time, Mother would like to finalize our wedding plans. Terrific. I'll talk to her. Good. After I finish. I see you're set for the evening. You should have made an appointment with me. The way I have to do with you. What happened to us? Milshaw Industries is what happened. Didn't we used to love each other once upon a time? I loved you and you loved me for financing your work. And you know that I never liked being left out. So? I found myself another lover. One who's always here when needed. With or without an appointment. So if you don't mind, we'd like to be left alone. Good night, Virginia. Hey, nice bike. You should have seen it when I brought it in. Don't look so bad now to get all this. Apurate, quita la bojala le. Es lo que te pasa por la gran puta que eres. ¿Eh? Quita la otra bota. Apúrate. Why don't you start her up? Oh, I was afraid I might disturb the peace and quiet around here. Yeah, I want to thank you for getting my bike put back in shape. I'm a little short right now, but. Don't thank me. Thank Mrs. Melshaw. Well, you did a lot for me. The doctor and put me up. I just want you to know I plan on paying you for it. Brad, as Mrs. Milshaw might say, someday you may do a good turn for somebody else. Yeah, I think it's about time I move along. I'll have Dr. Scott come out tomorrow afternoon. We'll let him decide. Well. Come on. Start her up. Yeah. Watch the half bar. You won't be on the road again. Mr. Brad has been a bad boy. A very bad boy. He would live with no saying adios. No. Well, Maria knows how to take care of bad boys, huh? see these nice people. But you don't know these nice people. Nice pretty Helen, she one who almost kill you. Your nice papa cover up for her. Let you stay here, say nothing. Why do you think no hospital, no police? Fix motorcycle like new. Hey, what are you saying, Maria? 
poor little angel Helen. She do this before she get Bianca. She kill man in Goleta. In all the papers. Many thousands of dollars and three years in jail. Oh, but Papa's money buy her out. Her Papa cover up for her because she on probation. Mark, you get us some coffee, huh? Can I help you? Yeah, I just uh, came in here to take a look at the car that ran me off the road. Oh, I'm afraid you cannot come in the garage. I'm just going to take one little look. Hey, All right. I don't get paid to fight. Just to take care of grounds, that's all. Paid to do this paint job? Yes, I did. Piss poor job. Uh, who, may I ask, is calling? I'll do my own introduction. Not even so much as an excuse me? It's boring out there eating alone. Thought I'd come in here and join you highbrows. Check out the Egg McMuffins, see how Angel enjoys her breakfast. Beats the chow in jail, huh? I was just uh, out there admiring your Ferrari. Must be a real killer on the highway, huh? Sweet Angel fit. Second thought. Maybe I should just have a word with the lord of the matter. Set things straight. Try me, Carlton. I'll be delighted to oblige you any time. I'll handle this. Any place. Mr. Carlton, would you be so kind as to wait in the bar where we can discuss this privately? Sure. You should have dumped the peon in a hospital days ago. How much does he know? She's right, Sam. You should have left the bastard in his ditch. And let my daughter, your fiance, go to jail? Could always have succumbed to his injuries. Good Lord. I need a drink. Charles. Get the whole nine yards here, Sam. Perfect setup, isn't it? Almost perfect. Little Helen, she can be a naughty girl sometimes, can't she? It's not beat around the bush, Mr. Carlton. How much? I haven't decided yet. We could have left you lying out in the street, you know. And have the police lab identify the red paint in my fender? Matching it up with a certain well-known Ferrari in the area? I don't think so. It's not your style, Sam. Bad form. How much? Well, for starters, I want more of the same. Room and board. Only this time's gonna be first cabin. Just like the upper 10,000. I want to be comfortable while I map my future out here. All right, we'll let that be for now. But for how long? There's nothing lower than blackmail. Hey, I'm not blackmailing you, Sam. You're blackmailing me. And they're not going to the police. So, time's dinner, Chuck. 7.30, Charles. Uh, casual, Sam? <clears throat> well, I think I'll head on into the plant before I say something I'd be sorry for. Or do you need me? Alton wants the top position in the company. Isn't that what you married Mother for? And you, after all, are her clone, huh? How could you allow that insect to even stay in our house? May I remind you that you're on probation, Helen, and that the courts frown on drunken drivers who kill and then almost kill again? Of course, you could always confess the police. A few years in prison might do you a world of good. No booze, no dope, no men hang-ups. 
After the fortune we've spent on your psychiatrist, that might be just the therapy you need. Don't talk foolish, Sam. You know very, very well that if Helen goes to jail, so will you. You're way ahead of me, aren't you, Virginia? Parents, we've sure made a hell of a mess of it, and we'll probably keep right on doing it. Protecting your own, Samuel, that is what matters. Even an animal will kill for its young. Mr. Milshaw. Hey, Alice. Are you all right? Uh, did you take your pills, Sam? Uh, it's nothing, a dizzy spell. My word, you're as red as a beet. Oh, it's just this army thing and this guy. Alice, I want you to run a thorough check on this man, Carlton. In depth. If there's anything dirty in his background, I want to know what it is. Find out anything at all. I need all the help I can get. He found out, didn't he? Yeah. You better take it easy. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, the Millshaws will be dining out this evening, sir. Oh, really? Well, what the hell? I'm already here. What might this be? I believe it's a check, sir. Oh, a check, Chucky. Okay. Open it. To the order of Brad Carlton, pay the amount of $100,000, sir. It is drawn on Mrs. Virginia Millshaw's personal account. Anything else? Payment in full for any and all claims against the Millshaw family, sir. Tear it up. But, sir. Tear it up or I'll tear you up. Just kidding. Drop it on the floor. Hey, you got any more of these? It's uh, quail, sir. We have many. Uh, all cooked, ready to go? Yes. Great. Who else is in the back? Uh, the cook and uh, I believe a helper, sir. Great. Tell them to get their butts out of here. We're gonna have a little picnic. But, sir, we simply can't. Charles, you got to learn how to enjoy life. Good life. We all taste it once before we die. <laughs> Checking the oil under here, you know. <laughs> I'm not sure, but I think you can be arrested for that in Oklahoma. <laughs> Blow you for the toaster. <laughs> Look, I got an idea. Why don't we start where we left off last week? You and me and my uh, friends here? Come on. A real round robin, Helen. Sorry, fellas. The only balls I'm interested in today are the kind that I hit with a racket. <laughs> when it's played by pro. Yeah, I almost guessed it was his playing. Well, you ready for your appointment with Dr. Scott? What happened after high school? Oh, I just hung out at the track. I just picked up whatever I could. Like what? Pit crew, mechanic, driver, whatever needed doing. Oh, I see. And your last job? This is an interview. The last job, that was, uh... That was a good job. 
when they went south. Why? Oh, you know, you get tired of taking crap from some dipstick just because some college gave him a sheepskin. I mean, when it came to mechanics, I could run circles around this bum. This won't hurt a bit. You're going to favor that for the next couple of weeks, but that's perfectly normal. Otherwise, I'd say you're going to be fit as a fiddle. Why don't you uh, come by and see me next week? I'm here on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Fine. Right. Uh, where did Miss Wilson go? Uh, she's over in the main building in operations. All right, thanks a lot. I'm really sorry, but I'm not sure any of us in here understand what you're talking about or your plans. For Christ's sakes, Roberts, do I have to draw the whole thing out for you in crayon? Your design won't work, Burgess. And you know where you can stick it? With a twist. He's all yours. Come back when you grow some hair on your nuts. Hey, you, Carl. Can you read? Military clearance required to enter this area. Take a walk. That's an imbecile. Hey, how do assholes like that get any power at all, huh? Father's a minority stockholder of Milshaw Industries. <laughs> Sam just couldn't put him in the old uh, mail room, now, could he? Now, if he wants the mail delivered on time. <laughs> that was a pretty impressive tour. You liked it, did you? Well, I could see of it. Clark, it wasn't restricted. <laughs> well, that's Ken's paranoia. It's what you call um, an open secret. And what's the secret? It's a project Milshaw Industries is doing for the government. The Army is looking for an all-terrain, lightweight, fast attack vehicle. The specifications are kind of tough to meet. Ah. Speak of the devil. Are you sure that front end suspension is strong enough to stand the gap? Well, we've tested it on vehicles twice that time. We've got to have at least another 1,000 pounds capacity, Sam. With all that extra weight, she might handle like a slug. We can't let you off on that noise, either. Diminishes the element of surprise. You're up against some real competition this time, Sam, and the sooner you face it, the better. Yeah. Well, uh, gentlemen, Miss Wilson will show you through the house, and I'll, I'll join you in just a few minutes. <laughs> Was there something you wanted? Yeah. I just... Couldn't help overhearing. I think I can help you solve your problem. Jesus. Guess that wasn't the right approach. He does seem to know a lot about automotives. A nerve that son of a bitch. Now mind your blood pressure, Mr. Milchow. He's going to help me. Oh. Uh, where's your nitro? Uh, it's over there in the top drop. Just this morning, I saw him studying some of your engineering books. Next, he'll pick up a copy of Gray's Anatomy and start heart surgery. Who the hell is he, anyway? He says he's a nobody. Well, he's a nobody because no one's ever given him a chance. He didn't have a father to help pay for his education. What happened? Well, his father died in the oil fields. And they didn't have high compensation in those days. Come on, Sam. It wouldn't hurt to try him out. You're serious about this, aren't you? Meanwhile, before it's too late, let's finish up those codicils I want to add to my will. What the hell are you doing? You guys have been looking at this thing ass backwards. It's all in the balance. And you put 100 pounds here? No, you don't put 100 pounds here. What you do is you spread the weight out evenly across all four members, then this thing's going to work. That engine noise you're worrying about, it's no problem. Just put a glass pack in each port, give you exactly what you want. Might even run a few degrees cooler. But it ain't gonna be cheap. Don't worry about that. <sighs> give me a free hand at the plant. Give me the tools and the personnel I need, I'll bring this sucker in for you. Two weeks. You're pretty sure of yourself, aren't you? Hey, if I don't do it, I go down that road, you never hear from me again. And if you succeed, what? I'll take a standard bonus. Five-year contract in Milshaw Industries. Heads you win, tails I lose. 
You see Miss Wilson at the plant after lunch. I'll draw up the papers. Automatically becomes the property of Millshaw Industries. If this spells out the bonus agreement and term of employment with biannual wage increments, and the third document is a release of liability, waiving your right to sue for injuries. Uh, I get the picture. It's like I told Millshaw. Heads he wins, tails I lose. You wanted a break, Brad. A, a chance to show what you could do, and Mr. Millshaw is giving that to you. It's an honest contract. You can take his word for it, huh? I've never seen him go back on it. What do I sign? Sam, what's this I hear about Carl working on the project? That's correct. We're behind schedule with a deadline closing in. I can't believe it. He blows into town, all of a sudden he's running the company. You want to let him walk in and take over my department just like that? He's not taking over, Ken. It's just a phase of this single project. And it's only two weeks. What about the efforts I put into it? I'm, I'm sure you've done your best. And what will the people in my department think? Oh, they hate your guts as it is. No, Sam. No, I will not allow... Ken, that's it. There is an opening in our rubber rafts division. This was Burgess's idea. That ain't an idea, and it's a wet dream. I know. I don't think the guy could find his dick in the dark. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna find a solution for this by morning. Sam? I'm sorry, Ken. It's Brad's baby now. Listen, the first couple of laps, just take it a little bit easy. Show me what she can do, boy. You got it. <clears throat> points off in the chamber. Hey, it's no problem. A couple of days, I had the whole thing. We're taking the machine shop. She's still awful noisy. That's because we're, we haven't tuned down the manifold yet. Hey, worst comes to worst, we go to composition pipe. That'll calm her down. The rest will be here Friday. We're gonna eat them up. Hey, where have you been hiding out, handsome? Funny farm. Speaking of funny farms, uh, would you like to see how the rich entertain themselves? Come on, might be worth a few laughs. Sure, I got no other plans. What do you got in mind? You'll find out. or an article of clothing. <laughs> I know what he wants. You know, as penniless vagrants, we really don't have any use for money. I'll take the top. Ain't my style, honey. Nobody's ever done that to her before. You were magnificent. 
thought she was your best friend. Well, she is. But that doesn't mean I like everything about her. What is it with her, anyway? What's her problem? The usual. Mommy, daddy, money, sex, drugs, alcohol. You know. You've got the hots for her, don't you? No, come on. Everybody does. I don't really care. I've done rather well on her discards. But let me warn you right off. Don't go by that tease of hers. It's all an act. Sober, she's frigid Bridget. But get her juiced, and she'll take on a whole football team and all of their fans. In our freshman year at college, some frat boys got her stoned on some punch that was damn near straight vodka. Then they put it to her. The funny part is, she liked it. She couldn't get enough. Then came the old guilt trip. You know, she went to confession, and the priest told her that it wasn't her fault, but it was the people that got her drunk that were to blame. Am I getting through to you? Yeah, in other words, she can't make love without feeling guilty unless she's drunk. However, I'm perfectly normal myself, hon. So, what's it gonna be? Your car or mine? She has a piss-poor attitude towards life. Wait, wait. I want him picking up his teeth with two busted arms. Go kick his ass. I think somebody else has got some plans for my body tonight. Here's what we do. I'll bite the little guy in the leg. The first one that touches you is going to get a crotch full of orthodonture. Sure you would, too. Listen, I'll take a rain check on the car, okay? Hey, sir. Mr. Carson, we seem to be having trouble with the rolls, and I gave Tony the day off. Will you please take a look at it? I must be at the airport by 11. Sure. Hop the hood. Oh, right. work this way loose. Why don't you try starting it up? Oh, I don't know how to thank you enough, Mr. Carlton. No problem. Wait, could you do me a favor, please, and why don't you drive me down there? I, I don't know what I'd do if this thing failed on me again. Yeah, sure. I'll move over.
what's the problem, officer? Step out of the car, please. What's with the guns? This vehicle has been reported stolen. Now step out of the car. Notify Mr. Milshaw immediately. Stop! Move back, everybody. Hands up! Higher, above your head. What is this? What in the name of hell is going on here? We've got Grand Theft Auto. But that's my car, and this gentleman works for me. We got a report from Mrs. Milshaw that this vehicle was stolen. Look, I can identify myself. That won't be necessary, Mr. Milshaw. I'm sorry. This is all my fault. I asked Brad to bring the car down here to the office, and I forgot to tell Mrs. Milshaw. I guess she thought it was stolen. Look, it's almost noon. Why don't you and your men be my guests in the executive dining room? Please. Woman like scorpion. Hey, big boy. Think you can get it up? You know, when a man's drunk, it ain't too pretty. But when a woman's drunk, it's just plain ugly. Why don't you come back when you grow up, huh? Mr. Milshot, this is not right. After a lifetime of devoted service, it's the least I can do. I don't want it. It'll only cause hard feelings with your family. Well, I can guarantee that anyway. What's going to happen to you after I die? I'm not going to let you go that fast. Don't worry about it. I'll simply walk away. I have some savings. And a new car. Nonsense. Alice Wilson, my devoted secretary and co-worker, shall receive the remaining 25% interest in Milshaw Industries and act as sole trustee and executor. You can't do this. Yes, I can. I can do any damn thing I please. It's my will. I'm of sound mind and fully aware of what I'm doing. Wrong. 
You can't have someone both as executor and beneficiary. It's illegal. All right, then you won't be executor. What am I going to do with you? Just what you've been doing for 25 years. You know something? In another time, in another life, things might have been different between us, Alice. Adding a little nitromethane. Sure, you've seen us do that before. Never. It just gives her a little more kick, that's all. Hell, everybody. It's illegal and hazardous to the driver. And as long as I'm responsible for this division, I won't tolerate it. Okay. Take her out, warm her up, and then we'll time her hot, right? Understand me, huh? I don't know what the hell you're talking about. You'll never make it by tomorrow. Twelve hours, brass is gonna be here. Anybody tired? Got to pull an all nighter on this one. If we can make it in that much time. We've got seven hours. Give it a shot. I'll be here any minute, fella. This is a great morning, isn't it? Sam, there'll be other contracts. Okay, Sam, you're in. We'll test your FAV under battle conditions in three weeks. We'll be ready. However, I'd improve upon the noise level of that machine. Mr. Milshaw, want to see me? Yeah, Brad, I do. We're leaving right away. Yes, sir. They say it's still too noisy. 
And they need another 500 rounds ammo capacity. All right, we'll work on that then. I know you will. You've done a good job for us, Brad. Boys are giving it their best. A damn good job. Right there. Oh, yeah. Good, right there. Hey, right. hey. Oh. Well, we got it, so let's drink to it, eh? Yeah. Ow! <clears throat> so what do we got to do next, huh? Test its endurance. No shots are at the Virginia estate. These modifications make a difference in the Army saying yay or nay. Mr. Milshaw, please. You know, I think it would be a good idea if you were in Washington to clarify any possible misunderstandings about what you have. Yes. Uh, hello, Mr. Milshaw. Just leaving. Well, I'm glad we caught you before you left for dinner. Is Brad there? Yeah, he's here with me now. We're wire photoing some materials to you, but I would suggest that Brad catch the red eye to Washington and go over them with you before you have your meeting with the big brass. I'll have him picked up at the gate. At the airport. About your suit. Big shot Brad, forget about this friend Marianne. No, I didn't forget about you, Maria. I've just been really busy. You know, this car means a lot to me. Oh, car? Who cares about car? I'll make you forget the car, huh? Listen, Maria, when I get back, we got to talk. Maria, I don't want to talk. Maria, I want to ask you. Hey. I want you to squeeze my butt and put your kisses right here. No. I'm tired of sleeping with a dirty old man and thinking of you when I have to go take off. Look, look, I got a plane to catch. All right? I'm in a hurry. Pigs! All men are filthy pigs! Hurry up, Bozo. I don't have all day. I want you to know right off, this is not my idea. Daddy asked me to pick you up. Our regular driver had to go to Baltimore for Mother. Well, here I thought you truly loved me. Mother's going to announce my engagement to Kim tomorrow after the hunt. Congratulations. What do you think? What do I think? <laughs> I figured you'd call your own shots. I do. Uh, I guess question number one is, do you really love him? We accommodate each other. What's love, anyway? It's when two people want to share a commitment together, which is kind of impossible for selfish people who never give a thought to anybody but themselves. You know, you are a rude, inconsiderate pig. Not true love. Now, that calls for a complete surrender of oneself. But you can't even enjoy physical love unless you're inebriated, so that kind of knocks you. What do you care, huh? Now, you probably end up just like your mother, only a little more screwed up. Crazy, I really am. There's one way I won't end up like my mother. Have you ever thought of what would happen if you don't die? Can you imagine how you would look disfigured with your body crippled like a vegetable with nobody to pull your plug? Saddle by tomorrow. What's eating her? Uh, Prenuptial jitters, I guess. Yeah, I guess. Come on, follow me. Brad, I'm yeah. really anxious to see those blueprints. That must have been an awful lot of work. The crew put in the hours. Yeah, I know, but you got it all done so fast. This is extraordinary, Brad. I think we've got it locked. 
You must be exhausted. Listen, why don't you stay over for the hunt? No, no, I'm gonna get back. You can catch a plane out tomorrow evening. Besides, I may need you here to explain some of the details of your design. Surely, oh, this isn't going to be so difficult for you. It's just an old-fashioned, classical hunt. Ladies in dresses, men in... You really want to see me fall on my ass, don't you, Mrs. M? What on earth ever gave you that idea? <laughs> I hope you're up to this, Carlton. Muscle flexing won't do you much good up here. Why don't you try the other side? Be careful not to overtake the fox, Brad. That's a bottle of booze penalty that Mrs. Milshaw will gladly pay. Oh, my God. 
Riding at a very early age. I'll bet. You're quite firm yourself. Sports. Construction um, work. Uh, the oldest costume. to get back. Listen, I've got great news. The Pentagon gave us the green light. They really liked your change. Beautiful. Have you seen Helen anywhere? No, I haven't seen her since this morning. My wife is fit to be tied. If Helen doesn't show up for dinner, how can Virginia announce the wedding plans without her daughter by her side? Come on, I'll walk you to the car. Yeah. Trust you had a nice flight. I think you owe me some sort of explanation, Helen. Your sudden refusal to announce our engagement has left me looking like a jackass. I told you on the phone. I'm just not ready to tie myself up yet. Who made you change your mind? Easy Rider Carlton? No. Why on earth do you ask? Because you've been acting like the cat that swallowed the canary ever since you got back from D.C. Did anything happen between the two of you? Yes. He bothered the hell out of me just by being alive. All right. Don't worry, sweetheart. We'll be rid of him soon enough. We are simulating actual desert battle conditions. Hope your men are up to this. We're ready. This is your chance. Just you watch.
Sam, you can start working on the preliminary order. Sam, the award officers will be at the plant in a couple of days. They may want to test a few at a time. We'll be ready when they are. We've got the boys working around the clock. Both the Army and the Marines want to test your FAVs in 13 different units. Can you have them ready by the 15th? I won't let you down. We'll ship by the 13th. They've requested the reinforced tubing, but other than that, we're home free. Do you know that they've already bought 12 of these for the 82nd Airborne? Congratulations. Uh, to you, too. Now, I've got engineering putting the final touches on the revised prints. But the Army being the Army, they've got to have these at the Pentagon by tomorrow morning. You know, that's no problem. We just uh, wire them out tonight. Uh -uh. In case they need clarification, I'd like to send them down with my best man. When do I leave? Alice, we still got reservations on that 7 a.m. flight to Dulles Airport. Yes, we do, Mr. Milshaw. Okay, put it in Carlton's name, and he'll pick up his tickets at the gate. Yes, sir. Want me to have Tony run you to the airport? No, no, I'll just uh, take my bike. I'll leave at 6 a.m. I'll be there in no time. Oh, by the way, uh, we're having a little celebration tonight at the atrium. Paco, all you have to do is be there with your truck before 6 a.m. Oh, excuse me. Isn't there something you should be doing, Paco? Right away, Miss Helen. Lose one of your playmates, love? Oh, here they are. Terrific. Fraternizing with the help, dear. Isn't that against your religion? I'm converting. The moment he passes that sign, he'll be slowing down for the turn onto the highway. You hit the gas and ram his ass over the cliff. And if there are any foul-ups, I'll be waiting for him on the other side with my 12-gauge. I hope he suffer great pain for how he dirty Maria. Cheers. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? Sure. I'm not good at making speeches. Then don't. <laughs> so I'll get right to the point. Will you join with me in welcoming to Milchoy Industries our new department head for research and development, Mr. Brad Carlton. <laughs> Brad, a toast to a long and rewarding relationship. You won't regret this. <laughs> no, thanks. I'll have a club soda with a twist. Here, the Milshaw fast attack vehicle takes a base of action against hostile military fire. Built for a direct attack, the FAV can literally... They're distributing the weight on all fours. Made all the difference, huh? Weight metal structure and even weight distribution. The Milshaw FAV is capable of moving through depth and jungle terrain. How about some hot lift? The FAV can top 80 miles per hour. Faster than any conventional offensive military vehicle. Where's the electricity? Reserved for the daughter of the house? Things change. Uh, this is Dave. Dave? This is Betty. Dave Roberts, chief engineer. Engineer, huh? Well, I have my master's in sexual practices of the North American male. Oh, yeah? Want to go for your doctorate? Sure. Why not? Among its onboard weapons are both a 7.62 millimeter and a 50 caliber machine gun. In addition, the FAB carries a tow anti-tank missile launcher with five missiles and a Mark 19 40 millimeter grenade launcher. With all of its available firepower, the FAV is able to supply the necessary military support to fight a conventional land war anywhere in the world. With its unique structure... Ah, uh, say, Brad. Who is it, Mr. Carlton, now? What do you want, Burgess? Oh, nothing, nothing, really. I just wanted to let you know how awfully glad we are to have you with the firm. Man of your moral convictions, there's no telling how far you might go. <sighs> Too bad about Maria, though. What about it? Oh, nothing. Nothing, old boy. I feel the same way you do. Just fuck them and forget them. You know, you're starting to stink this place up, so why don't you get lost, Why huh? don't you just kiss my asshole? Or are you afraid of a fight now that you've got something to lose? This ain't the place. Oh! <laughs> 
me. I'm sober. I haven't had a drink in a week. Come with me. I want to show you something. It's not that Helen doesn't want to. I'm afraid she's just not capable of sharing or loving. You're probably right. But it's not her fault alone. You always gave her everything she ever wanted. And now you're about to buy her a man. At least he's a real man. If she wants this one, she's gonna have to get him for herself. Why didn't I do that when I had my chance? Mother didn't concoct this. hung up on you. You wouldn't understand anyway. Well, try me. You know, it's going to take you a long time to get what you have here. Hey, I'm not so sure I want what you've got here. I'm just trying to keep my self-respect, what's left of it. Then why? You've got me, you've got everything that's mine and will be mine. Is that so terrible that you just want to run away from it all? I feel like a leech living high in somebody else's hog. It doesn't make any sense does to me. You know what you want? I know what I want. Brad, please don't go. Okay. 
When I'm long gone, you're gonna see I'm right. Can you see us 20 years from now, you with your family and me with- No, Brad, don't do this to me, please. It's no good, Helen, it's not gonna work. Wait a minute. You got me to open up to you. I was terrified, but I did it. You taught me to take and give. You make me feel safe. When we're together, it's the most exciting feeling. And when we make love, I melt into you. If you leave me now, I'm just gonna go back to my old ways. No, you won't. You're different now. Look, I don't belong here. I feel like an imposter. Forget how it all came about. No, you can't forget about the past. Because that little voice comes back, whispering in your ear, telling you that it started with blackmail. Oh, the hard part is I love you. Brad. Brad! Paco, you be ready with your truck at 6 a.m. We'll be rid of him soon enough. I guess he's out of your life for good now, sweetheart. Not if I can help it. 